Hello guys, today I'm going to share with you my passion to Behringer Crave. It's one of the greatest bass machines, groove machines I've ever met. And I'm going to show you some tips and tricks, page ideas, uh, how to use this little guy as your main bass machine in your setup. Uh, first of all, when I got Behringer Crave, I used it as a regular synth, as a semi-modular synth uh, playing my keyboard. Uh, sometime later I decided to dive into its sequence uh, and while I was um, making these sequences, uh, of course, I tweak the synth parameters, I used some patch codes, and after all, sequence uh, plus synthesis gave me some expressive basses. Uh, why expressive? Uh, Crave sequencer has a lot of parameters for each step. Note, uh, note length or gate length, slide, accent, ratchet. Uh, the combination of these parameters and page outputs and inputs uh, gave me very interesting results that I'm going to show you today. So let's start with the first simple things. Uh, first of all, let's listen to the sequence I have. There are a lot of parameters set inside the sequence, like I mentioned before, ratchet, slides, accents, uh, gate length, and so on. But in terms of sound, it's quite general, regular, nothing special. And let's add some life to it. One of the most important parameters inside any sequence, whether it's bass sequence or arpeggio, to my taste, it's uh, the note length, or in terms of sequencing grave, it's uh, gate length. Let's hear once again my sequence. You may notice some differences between the note length. Maybe it's not that obvious, so let's uh, emphasize this difference. What should I do? I put gate output to filter cutoff. Let's hear it once again. Uh, now the difference is quite obvious, but the only thing I don't like is the filter is opening the whole way up. So let's use the so-called attenuator, uh, gate output to mix 2, and then CV mix to filter cutoff, and with this knob I'm gonna set the amount of this modulation gate to cutoff. Nothing. Uh, do you hear this kind of accents? Technically speaking, it's not accents, like uh, an option inside the sequencer, but subjectively it sounds like an accent. Without it? Of course, an important role plays this decay knob, because as well as the gate length, it also sets kind of uh, note length. So the combination of gate length and decay length give us very very first steps to improve and make our sequence more interesting. So let's go further. On our page panel we have a sign output, some kind of a mysterious thing. What is it? I guess most of you know that this assign output may be set inside uh, Behringer Synth Tool application. Uh, it's available for Mac and PC. Inside this application you may set more than 10 different kind of signal sources for this assign uh, output. We're going to try to set to this output some parameters that are connected with the clock or with the rhythm. There are about 10 of them. Let's start with uh, clock. So let's set this output to cut off first of all, just to listen to what it does. You see, it generates a signal like this, pam 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 pam, and every time it opens a filter. Let's set the clock divided to. Divided 
divide is 4. And let's compare without it. Kind of boring in comparison to this. If you don't want the filter to be opened like this, again, we may use some attenuators, mix inputs. Uh, let's try to combine this assign output with gate and the output of the mixture goes to filter. And with this knob, I can now regulate whether my filter is open according to the clock to the gate or both of them. Let's change the clock again a bit more faster. Do you hear it sounds like a delay? I hope you liked it because personally I liked it very much because with this modulation we have uh, dynamics, we have difference between uh, closed filter and open filter and this gives us some accents and groove, wipe and so on. Let's try another connection. For my assigned source I'm gonna choose ramp. It's a rising saw. And now let's connect it to uh, mix CV. MixCV is this knob. So all of you know that this knob is the mixture between oscillator and the noise. Let's hear what this connection does. Do you hear at the end of uh, some phrase it adds the noise and it sounds like a drum feel uh, or bass feel. Let's hear it again. Uh, quite an interesting thing, I think. Now, let's try to connect this uh, assign output to oscillate modulation. Uh, in my case, it's square wave. Modulation is set to width. And the assign output gonna modulate this knob. Let's hear it. Uh, do you hear how the pulse width is being changed in some unusual way? It's not just like an L4 or envelope generator, but it's an assign. And in real time, while the sequence is playing, I'm gonna change assign output in synth application to different positions. And let's hear it. Again, it was ramp up, saw. This result is quite interesting too. It sounds like a loop with a silence in the end because of the pulse width is getting so narrow due to this modulation that we hear silence and not the oscillator. Let's scare it again. Again, let's try another sources. Triangle. It's gonna sound like an alpha, just clock. Clock divided two. And my favorite one is random. Uh, 
uh, randomly generates a random signal for each step. So each step sounds differently because of the modulation of the pulse width. Let's try to filter cutoff. Do you hear it sounds like a sample and hold, a classical modulation to the filter? And again, I don't want the filter to be open so wide. Let's use it with this mixture. And here. Wow. For me it sounds fantastic because it's so groovy and so expressive due to these uh, modulations. Also just for try, let's connect it to resonance. This sounds a bit freakier because of the raise of the resonance, we lose some low end. Uh, in my case, I don't really like this connection, but you may use it as a fix. With, with some portion of delay or reverb, I, I guess it's gonna sound more interesting. Uh, another interesting destination where we may connect this assign output is to uh, VC mix, the movement of this knob. I guess you remember our gate goes to mix 2 and this knob regulates the amount of modulation of gate to filter cutoff. But I did it manually with my hands. What if we connect our sign output to mix input? And this knob is gonna be modulated. Let's hear the results and again while playing I'm gonna switch different sources to a sign output. I guess you're already hearing some gentle movements of filter. Let's hear it again. Let's change the sources. It's so. The result is kind of cyclic. Ramp. Again, ramp up gives us kind of bass feel at the end of the phrase. Let's try it some different. Triangle. Triangle gives us a much more smoother result. It emphasizes with this knob uh, middle of the phrase. Let's check it with clock source. Very groovy. Sequence of clock. Sequence of clock divided two. Again, do you hear the accents that appeared due to these connections? This accent didn't exist in my sequence originally. Let's hear it again. Mm -hmm. 
very very interesting you may also experiment with pitch uh, oscillator cv and oscillator fm but in terms of bass it's kind of not what we like again you may use it for some fix timbers um, by the way let's check it send output to fm That's a different assign source. So random clock. Okay, I give up. Uh, this type of connection, as well as this one. By the way, I like this one more because the range of the notes is wider. I have some bass and I have some high notes that sounds like bells. By the way, I like it. <laughs> okay, you may experiment with the assign output to any of these synth parameters to build your timbers in real time. So while sequence is playing, the timber is gonna be flowing, evolving, morphing according to the output source of the assign output. Okay, let's go further. Previously, we tried to connect this assign output to some of the synth parameters like fields, resonance, and others. Crave gives us an opportunity to set modulation to sequence parameters like reset, hold, and so on. And this gives us very, very interesting results and let's check them out. Uh, before moving to the sequence parameters, one more very, very important parameter is envelope gate. Again, I connect a sign output to this gate and what we're gonna have. I have some notes playing the sequence and then my assign output gonna retrigger envelope regardless of the note start. So the note gonna play and the trigger is gonna be restarted for example, randomly. Let's hear and compare with this connection and without it. Is a very rock result as a bass guitar. You may use this type of connection in real time in your jam in the most expressive part of your track and culmination. So it plays like this, and then it's gonna play like this. And again, it's gentle and mild. You hear there are no clicks when I put it in or out, so you're kind of safe doing this in real time. Let's try a different assign sources to this envelope gate. At the moment it's playing sequence clock, sequence clock divided two. Wow. Sequence clock divided four. I can't believe how many grooves and vibe this machine generates using these type of connections. Uh, here my sequence originally is not something special, but with these connections and the sequence parameters, we have already generated so many different results. And if you use some of these results, your baseline in your tracks will never be boring because it's always evolving, morphing and live its own life. Let's change the sources further. Was clock divided four, step ramp, step saw, do you hear this bum, bum. It sounds like a longer note that spreads for several steps. Uh, you may know that in sequencer you can't set a note longer than one step. 
But this kind of connection give us uh, the illusion of a long note. Let's hear it again. I really like it. Let's go further. Let's saw. Triangle. Quite gentle result. Random. Not that obvious because the overall sound is getting more complex and we don't exactly hear whether it's uh, the result of a sign connection or filter modulation or other things. But anyway, it sounds interesting and not repetitive. Uh, another trick I'm gonna share with you with this type of connection, assign output to gate, is connected with the length of the sequence. At the moment, the length of my sequence is even. It's 8 steps or 16, I don't remember exactly. But when the length of the sequence is not even, for example, 7 steps, 5 steps, 9 steps, 3 and so on, this connection gonna behave in a very interesting way. Let's check it. I'll find the sequence with fewer steps so like this one and again let's connect a sign to envelope gate and choose not random but some familiar source so Do you hear what happens? We get some kind of polyrhythm. This assigned output sends <coughs> saw signal uh, in an even matter, in even behavior. But the length of my sequence is seven steps. Seven or five? Five. So the modulation is straight and the sequence is not straight. It's broken, let's say it like this. And this gives us these polyrhythmic results. Again, let's uh, hear the sequence with different sources for a sign output. For saw, let's choose ramp. Without it. Triangle. Stress sequence and the broken one. Quite a different thing. Clock. Clock divided two. Look very complicated thing, but it's in sync. Clock divided four. really like it. Step random. Again, in this case, random is not that obvious because the overall sound is quite complex. What else I would like to do? At the moment, I like the result I got with this connection assigned to envelope gate and I don't want to lose it. But at the same time I need one more assign output. So let's use multiple input <coughs> connected to multiple output to envelope gate to preserve this result. Let's choose some different sequence. Without it. Let's connect the second multiple output to some of the sequencer parameters like reset or hold. Let's start with the hold, what it does. Uh, as soon as the signal 
comes to this hold input, uh, it, it freezes the note that is being played. Let's hear it. I, th I think we should disconnect this envelope output to hear this modulation a bit clearer and then we move it back. So I've got my connection assigned to hold and let's hear the results. Without it, just for you to remember the sequence. And with this connection, Yes, you've noticed that some notes uh, got frozen for some kind of time. Uh, let's choose different sources for assign output. No, I can't do anything because I just so like these bass lines. I just want to stop this video and connect my drum machine and tweak the knobs and do it for an hour, but I should <laughs> uh, make this video for you guys. Let's continue. Uh, clock divided four. So these frozen notes are not gonna be so often. So you should try to connect this assigned to hold uh, with different sources and hear what you like and leave it as it is. Okay, what else we can modulate inside the sequencer? Let's use our LFO output to modulate this reset parameter. What is reset? Our sequence is playing and as soon as this input gets a signal, the sequence is drops to its start position and always restarting. Let's hear it. And of course, everything is depends on the LFO rate. If it's too fast, it can freeze some steps. And we can watch this indicator to see whether the reset is gonna appear. Again, so many rhythms and so many results of the combination of uh, assign output to hold, LFO to reset, Let's connect it again, assign to envelope. My original sequence has changed so greatly. Remember how it sounds and let's compare without these modulations. completely different thing. So at this point we come to a conclusion this, this connection can completely change the, your sequence. The only thing you should do beforehand is to set the sequence in a quite interesting way. Ratchets, accents, slides, uh, note length and so on. So these dynamics will be shifted, frozen, hold it, reset and you get a very very interesting result. Let's go further. Quite a simple thing we didn't try is to connect a sign output to uh, VCA input. It's kind of tremor effect. Of course, it's not going to be like tremor, but... Again, a completely different thing without this connection. I really couldn't imagine that my sequence is going to be changed like this. Uh, another thing you should experiment with is this temp uh, knob. Uh, what it does when your Crave is uh, receiving an external clock, in my case it's Ableton with these drums, uh, tempo is 120. Uh, this tempo knob uh, don't actually regulate the tempo, 
but it's but it sets the time division. Uh, let's see it. it. Makes it faster or slower when I set it to seven. It plays my notes as a sixteenth notes. So if you if you have your sequence that originally sounds like this, you may change it with double speed slower. Again, subjectively, it sounds like a completely different sequence. And let's uh, make it more interesting. I can't believe it happens. So interesting result. Remember how it sounded previously? So again, this is another way to completely change your sequence and need something different. How else you may play with this button? Uh, you know that each sequence has its starting point. Let's hear it again. So there are steps that are upbeat or downbeat, but when I move this button in real time and then move it back to its original posi position, 7 in my case, this starting point is shifted. So the perception of upbeats and downbeats is shifted as well. Uh, let's hear it. This step, at the moment it's in, in the end of my phrase, in my, of my sequence. But when I shift this starting point, it's going to be shifted somewhere, maybe in the middle or at the beginning of my beat. It was in the end of the second part, but now it's in the beginning of the second part. So you can tweak this knob a couple of times and again you shift your starting point of the sequence and it changed the perception of the sequence. In this video I used the sequences I made by myself. There are 64 of them and they are available for each of you. You may find a link in my video description or the very first comment. If you like some of them, uh, you may use it. And as you see, we need some sequences and it's much better if these sequences are already expressive. But we need them as a starting point for a real game with these parameters and connections. So I really recommend you to repeat everything we tried in this kind of lesson. And I hope these connections and parameters are gonna inspire you for new tracks new live jams, performances, and you're gonna love your synthesizer, this bass machine, more and more. I guess that's all for today. I didn't try to connect these outputs to maybe some inputs, but I think these connections are quite obvious because they are mostly about the synthesis, not the groove or rhythm. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below, and see you later in further videos, lessons or jams, and goodbye guys.